Brawl Stars just added mutations to the game and right away I got one of the most insane ones. We got Rico. As soon as I unlocked this mutation, I knew what I had to do. Rank 30 Rico was now a priority. Giving Rico the ability to extend his projectile's length when you bounce them off of anything is incredibly powerful, and you guys will see what I'm talking about. I was pretty sure the best mode to play him on was Godzilla City Smash, which is the new mode that they added for this event, and I was not wrong. Look at how fast I shred through that boss. The crazy thing about this mode is there is so many walls that your balls just bounce forever, and the more targets that they hit, the more they bounce. I quickly realized that if I'm able to get up into one of their corners, I can just delete everything. And once they let me do that to their city, it's just clean up from there. One thing I quickly came to find out is Meg's mutation is nothing to play about. The amount of damage she does with her added projectiles is insane. The only way I can beat her is if I take advantage of the walls, stay behind them, and try to just bounce my balls off of anything and everything, knock her out that mecha form, and do not let her get her mech form back. Don't even kill her. We were able to pass 800 trophies and then 850 trophies super fast with the strategy we're using. But it wasn't always an easy win, and this comp right here gave us some trouble. Everything started out great. They let me get up into the top right corner and I was able to get some pretty good damage. But later that game when I respawned after a death, I discovered something. We let this Rico cook. And this Rico cooked our whole base. He might as well have been making Thanksgiving dinner. And I was too busy destroying the enemy's base that I didn't even realize that we were down at 2%. Now it was down to the last 30 seconds. We knew we needed to make a full send attempt to get these last couple of buildings down at the corner of their base and I came so close, this Rico was playing defense and I just wasn't able to get it down all the way. We came 2% to 2% and at that point we knew the best decision was to just take the tie game and keep our streak. And so we did. Meg wasn't the only thing to worry about though, and as much as it sucked going against a Rico in a Ruffs, that wasn't nearly as challenging as going against a mutated Melody. Melody's mutation gives her the ability to have up to 6 notes active at one time, and those notes can just shred through our whole city. The thing about this game mode is once you destroy most of the city, there's not much left to bounce your balls off of if you're a Rico or a Ruffs. This makes mutated brawlers like Meg and Melody incredibly strong in the endgame because 1. They don't rely on walls, and 2. Melody can just dash across the map and get those last couple points. And by the time I get Rico across the map, the Melody has already beat me to it. And right after we take that loss, the next game came down so incredibly close, 2% to 2%, 1% to 1%, and they were able to get it first. Very unfortunate, we lost two games in a row, we were down at 865 trophies. We ended up picking things back up, and the next game we almost 100 to 0% these guys, and so we ended up walking away with that win. It didn't stop there though, the streak continued up to 870, 88, 90, and then all the way up to 900. But as soon as we crossed over that 900 threshold, we seemed to have entered a whole new bracket of players, and for our first game in 900, we went against some ladder warriors. We knew this game was going to be difficult, but that did not discourage us. It was kind of strange seeing a Janet in this mode, it was definitely the first one that we encountered, but maybe they knew something that we didn't because it was working out pretty good and she was doing some good damage. Melody was the main problem, but luckily I was able to take her down right there. The game actually ended up coming very very close, and we almost got it, we were down to 5% to 2%, and I just couldn't get the last of it. Yeah, these guys knew what they were doing, so the loss didn't really come as a big shock to me. After taking that loss though, I was determined to not lose again. After all that, we ended up just one game away from 1,000 trophies on a 7 game win streak and it all came down to this one last game. And from the looks of it, it looked like an easy win. That was my battery, not yours. We started things out just like any other game. I walked up on the right side and just bounced my balls everywhere. The goal is to just spam and let my balls rain down on the enemy's foreheads. One thing I haven't mentioned about this game mode is the dinosaur Godzilla thing is actually not that good. We tried our best to avoid using it because there's a lot of bugs where you can get stuck in the wall and easily turn the game into a 2v3 just like this one on the enemy side. And once I saw that happen, it pretty much secured the win for us because there's no way a gray is going to be able to take down our city. We were able to finish this one off at 1% to nearly 90%. We crushed this one and we got the rank 30. Plus 11 trophies with that 8 game win streak put us at 1,002 trophies, but it's not over. Rico was not the only mutation that I ended up getting today. I actually got the second best one for this mode, Ruffs. But this time I did not have the help of last hour, and instead I had Mackian with his power 10 Frank. I know it kind of sounds insane, but Frank is actually one of the best brawlers for this game mode. We did not have a third player, so we were just duo queuing, but with Frank and Ruffs, it was pretty hard to lose. 
Ruff's mutation is very similar to Rico's, and it's hard to say which one's better. With Ruff's, you get plus one projectile, which is actually a huge buff, and you also get the increase in length when you bounce your shot off a wall. Ruff's projectiles actually do a lot more damage than Rico, though, with 1,200 per shot, and if you get hit by one of these projectiles just flying around the map, it's gonna hurt. For this round specifically, we kind of lucked out and got a decent Otis player, I guess, with the Otis glitch. If you guys don't know about that, then when Otis pops his gadget and uses it on the Godzilla, you end up using Otis's gadget as an attack, and it does a ton of damage. Although Rico and Ruffs have very similar mutations, they're not the exact same. When you get Rico up in this top corner, he can obliterate it in like two seconds. But with Ruffs, it takes a little bit more time, and what I like to do is throw my super in the top corner because the corner is usually what takes the longest to take down. And if you're able to position yourself so that you can shoot horizontally just like this, you do a lot more work in a lot less time. We were able to cross 800 trophies very easily, but once we got up to around 820 trophies, we started encountering some losses, so we needed to find a third. Meet Diego. I found Diego on the lost and found section in the Brawl Stars Discord server and decided to give him a shot as Rico. Now our comp was a full rush comp. We had no defense, but that's okay because we didn't really need it. The strategy was just to destroy their base before they destroy ours. With all three of us able to get up into their base or even just two of us, we're able to outpace their Godzilla and whatever other brawlers that they're using, which usually got us the win. Obviously, if I spawn back in and see that they're destroying our base, I'm going to kill them real quick and get back to theirs but don't do what I just did and enter Godzilla mode. Usually if I do this by mistake, I try my best to die fast as possible because I don't want to be glitched into a wall. With the help of our third teammate though, we were able to pick up a bunch of wins and we were on the edge of 900. And when I say edge, I mean literally. The final game for 900 went no different than any other game, but look at the amount of projectiles that are just flying around the map. And the funny thing is you actually have to try your best to dodge them because it's like a mini game within the game mode. You don't want to die and leave your teammates alone. We were able to pass 900 trophies and we were still going strong. But like I said before, passing 900 trophies is like entering a whole new threshold of players. And for this game, we played against a mirror comp and it was all going to come down to who's going to play better with it. Luckily for us, their Frank didn't really understand the concept of dodging, so I was able to kill him and move up the base very easily without worrying about our side being destroyed. And then I got the kill on the roughs and at this point it was looking good. I throw my super down on those couple blocks, get those out the way move up into this top right corner, and now I go to town. Unfortunately, the Rico spawned back in just in time to play some defense, and, you know, I can't really do much against that super right there. In the end, the game came pretty close, and we were down to 4% to 7%. Luckily for us, one of their teammates went Godzilla, and I'm pretty sure that was by accident because it ended up giving us the win. And with that game, we crossed over 950 trophies, just 45 more. One thing I haven't talked about yet is the Angelo mutation and how strong it is in the end game. Remember when I said it's tough once the map opens up? Yeah, well, this is the reason why, especially against an Angelo. He can just completely lock it down with defense and not let us cross to the other side to finish things off. And it's very tough to play against. I guess the strategy with this game was to spread out because he can't take us all down at once. And since he was locked up on me, my teammates were able to make it to the other side and finish things off. The game was not giving us a break because right after that we faced another mirror comp. Once again though, these guys just couldn't compete with us and we cleaned it up. We were now one game away from 1000 trophies, just 3 trophies and we were on a 5 game win streak. Our last game was up against a full damage comp. These guys were going to base rush us. The enemies were 20% ahead of us and it was not looking good. I was stuck on defense and I could not let this monster make it to our side. Even though we were not playing the Otis glitch, playing against it was still sometimes difficult because they can just wipe out our whole base easy. Unfortunately, we just weren't able to get it and we ended up losing our final game for 1000 trophies. This left us just two games away, but the next one we ended up winning. Yeah, that was my battery again, my bad. Once again, we were one game away, but this time we could not lose. I'm telling you, it's always on the last game. This is why I don't push rank 35s, because I know I will get to 1,249 trophies and then tilt down to 800. Anyways, we were up against our final matchup, and this one was against some question marks, so they must have been a bit higher than us. I was not too worried, though, because they were playing BB, and I had not lost to a BB composition on this game mode yet so far, so I was pretty confident we'd be able to take them down and not die to BB bubbles. Surprisingly though, we were 30 seconds in and things were not looking great. Our base was at 34%, but they had let me in their corner, which means I was going to destroy it. I was determined that this was going to be my final game and I needed to stay alive so I could take down this corner. Their Rico failed at killing me, which forces this Ruffs to play defense instead of offense, which is very good because even though he killed me, I was able to get the trade off and I was happy. The final game seemed to not be as easy as it looked from the start, but we were able to get it 3%, 2%, 1%, and there's the rank 30 Ruffs.
As much as I was relieved to have gotten the rank 30, this could not end here because my teammate needed his rank 30 Frank and I was not going to leave him hanging. I grinded things out for a little bit longer with my team and we were able to pick up this final win. This game put me at 1045 trophies but that didn't matter. What matters is this guy got rank 30 power 10 Frank which is just kind of funny. And the part that makes it even better is this is his first rank 30. So uh yeah. If you guys did enjoy this one leave me a like and a comment and join the discord if you want to. Link will be in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!